hope everybody's doing well after last night and the quote unquote new information which came from congressman burchett and it's not really new it's his amendment from july and um let me know if you can hear me good morning everybody and hopefully this works because she's streaming representative luna and moskowitz burchett gates burleson and ogles all republicans except moskowitz they're going to talk about the burchett amendment which as far as i can tell i'm not a congressional expert by any means um it's one plus pages and it basically says and i, I don't want to miss the luna live stream but i have douglas dean johnson has been tweeting about it a lot and it's three minutes till i can see if i can pull it up let's see no that's wrong so we have 64 pages from schumer rounds and people have issues with it but oh shoot all right that is not hopefully i get all right that's gonna work sorry this was like a last second thing and just to do this it takes a, a couple of minutes to put everything together slovakia hello scotland it's always great to have international folks watching if you guys note that they go live because i have to keep updating it i'm trying to find my bookmarks so i can just show you some of what douglas dean johnson has said about this and rogue uap task force he's another good one i won't go over i'll just go quickly i'll keep an eye on you guys let me know if you see the stream somewhere of course you're looking for it here present okay so that's basically he said gates has revealed that he much prefers a house passed burchett amendment to the senate passed schumer rounds uap amendment and bear with me as i keep checking her page because that's where she's supposed to be streaming it so gates prefer and the other folks prefer the burchett amendment one plus page uh, as opposed to the 64 pages of Sch schumer rounds and then doug says the burchett that's basically the burchett amendment he says it added added to the ndaa by the house of representatives as part oh let me get rid of that damn it sorry there we go as part of a package of agree to amendments basically the senate has their version the house has their version they come together and negotiate but burchett doesn't really have much to it so i'm all fine for negotiating but so generally doug says this seems to mean it says they want to declassify this is burchett related records related to publicly known sightings and of course, as long as it doesn't compromise national security, that's always going to be in there. Same with Schumer rounds. It seems to mean that the agency, the DOD, that classified certain materials based on national security, now is told to declassify some of its own some of its own documents only if it does not believe that it would compromise national security. Meanwhile, Schumer rounds has the same issue, but it'll be a panel which gets to decide that, and then it goes to the president. And obviously, it can always be nixed by the president. But it's not the same agency that's making the decision here so that's that's a big deal and there still is not hopefully if you guys oh there's nick nick thanks so much for coming on nick can you hear me joe i can hear you you hear me i sure can here i am there you are in washington i'm so glad you were able to jump in so what what's your take Nick, I'm waiting to see if Luna and the rest go live soon because I haven't seen anything yet. What's your feedback that you're getting from the offices that you're visiting? It's been a little bit of a mixed bag this morning, Joe. Um, I had a good meeting. Um, I believe it was the chief of staff of Tim Burchett, uh, Mike Greider. Um, 
he was probably the most receptive. I've stopped by Burchett, Luna, Moskowitz, and Garcia so far. All other than um, Garcia were able to meet with me. And these are, of course, all House members. Um, I had the most extensive conversation, fortunately, uh, with Burchett's, Burchett's staffer. Burchett, of course, is, you wrote this new amendment that's, that's just not nearly, frankly, the piece of legislation that the full UAP Disclosure Act is. Um, and I think, you know, I'm going to try to be positive. My sense was, is that they might coalesce around the UAPDA after all. I'm, I can't obviously know that for sure until things happen, but um, I didn't get major pushback on the utility of, of coalescing around the much more voluminous legislation that frankly was just a lot more thought out and, and, and useful, frankly, on a number of counts. Uh, then you know the page and a half that that Burchett's uh, amendment represents. You've been going over it. It looks like, so I'm just making the rounds today. I've got a few more offices. I'm going to try to get by after this stream if it starts soon. It was originally supposed to be open to the public. Alas, it's in the Capitol building behind me itself. Uh, it's not open to the public. You can't even get in outside of a tour. I'm, I find it unfortunate that what was supposed to be open to the public as of yesterday is now a very closed event. Um, but fortunately, again, you can just stop in and reps offices. A lot of people don't realize this. They all say, please come in on a sign. You can knock and enter and see what happens. And I guess I logged enough years doing sales where I can just kind of do that confidently to some degree. But, uh, you know, I, you, we got to just kind of make the message heard. I really encourage your listeners to call DC reps, both their own and some others that are attached to the UAPDA and part of the NDA legislation negotiations. You know, go to declassifyuap.org, go to uapcaucus.com, use the call tools that both sites offer. Please make noise today and frankly, every day until the final NDAA gets signed by the president. We got to treat every day like it's ours to win and it's ours to lose. And that's only going to happen if, if people um, make the noise. Um, they have to really call. These things get listened to, especially if you're a constituent. You know, if you're a Burchett, a Luna, a Gates constituent today, please call their offices. Please tell them you're a constituent and please tell them that, you know, whatever you know, changes they want to make to the UAPDA, they can try to negotiate those now. They can always try to do more in the future. It's always possible to update legislation. That's how it works. Um, but they can't necessarily throw a monkey wrench into this bill that was put together you know, with the voices of Carl Nell, David Grush, many insiders who are sick of the BS and sick of the cover-up of UAP. It has a lot of meaty language, legal definitions that get defined that are very important, like technology of non-human origin and non-human intelligence. We need this kind of language to get baked in. It also supports you know, looking into the intelligence community's involvement with this. The Burchett Amendment doesn't do this effectively. So Please make the calls and tell everyone to support the UAP Disclosure Act and getting it in the, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act. It's going to be probably a couple of weeks at least. I'm going to cut you off, Nick. We're going to go live now. Hopefully it works. Looking forward to listening. Oh, it's really low. I'm going to mute us. The intelligence community shut uh, shut down an amendment I tried to include in the FAA reauthorization bill, and basically it would just require the Federal Aviation Administration to report the UAP sightings by commercial pilots to Congress. I was told by the whip that bill was uh, killed um, by the Damn intelligence it. community, and I corrected him and I said, "You mean intelligence committee?" And he said, "No, the intelligence community." And as they say, when you're over the target, that's when you get the most fired. Um, and it just, like I said, it would just require the FAA administration to report UAP sightings by commercial pilots to Congress. Again, they spend a whole hell of a lot of time and effort and money to tell us something, to tell us something exists that does not exist. And so, um, fortunately, another member, amendment I introduced this year that was to increase transparency. And honestly, this is what this whole issue is about, is about transparency. On the issue uh, was included in this year's NDAA Act, it required the Department of Defense to declassify any documents, any documents and records relating to publicly known sightings of UAPs or UFOs that do not compromise the national security of the United States. It all comes down to one word. That word is transparency. 
I've been briefed on things I can't talk about in public because it's considered classified. So why are we classifying so much about this, especially if the information doesn't jeopardize national security and we have departments telling us that they do not exist? Um, we are here today to discuss that. I've got several other notes, but I'll, I'll skip over them because I know you all probably want to hear from the folks behind me. Um, we had some great witnesses, as I stated before, but these folks want to talk about more of the transparency and some of the pushback we're receiving from those aforementioned groups. And with that, I will turn it over to my dear friend, Representative Luna, the mother of Henry. If, she gets, if you get to see this kid, you got to see this kid. It is spectacular. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being here today. It is unacceptable that any mid-level unelected bureaucrat staffers can tell members of Congress that we are not allowed to access information about UAPs. Let me be clear that we are the representatives of the elected or that of people that sent us here to do the right thing. Unelected bureaucrats do not get to say what we can and cannot see. We've had three-star generals tell us that we did not have authorized access to this information. But yet, how do you expect us to continue to send taxpayer money to fund government projects if you're not even allowing us to see what those projects are? And I say that because, as some of you know, we have been consistently hearing that we do have not have the authorized clearances, again, by people not elected to office. Let me repeat this. The people's representatives, members of Congress who sit on judiciary, armed services, and the oversight committees are being denied access to this information. But if we do not have the clearance, who does? Does this sound like a truly free country? Referencing Rush, I know there was many questions in regards to what was happening with his current IG report and whether or not we were uh, able to receive access to that information. We were previously denied this. We have now received permission from him directly to go back into the SCIF to review that information. But in my short time in office, it has become very clear and evident that there is an apparent attempt to, an orchestrated attempt to deny us this access. And it appears that that is coming from the intelligence community. We have a rampant overclassification problem. We need the UAP Disclosure Act, which I would ask that if you see to my left, you have Representative uh, Burchett's language and it should be added. As we know, we do not want to go forward with fake promises to the American people. I'd also like to speak on the issue that some members have stonewalled our efforts to get transparency and this is also unacceptable. No one member is above another and the American people deserve to know as much about the existence in this universe as possible. Um, they certainly have a right to know about their, whether or not if their safety is threatened and most especially when it comes to our men and women defending us in the skies. This is a simple answer. Stop barring us from the truth. <coughs> Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, I should say now. <clears throat> so I'm happy to be here uh, with the folks that have really been talking about this um, since the, the beginning of Congress. This is not something that I thought I would get involved in uh, when I when I first came to Congress. Uh, but quite frankly, the reason why I got involved is as we started asking questions, legitimate questions, <clears throat> the pushback we got is what interests me. Every time we pulled a thread and we stumbled on something, it seemed that we would get stonewalled. And so, you know, NASA has stated that the term UAP does not necessarily imply extraterrestrial origin, <clears throat> which means we could be making these things domestic. Um, and so look, if these are advanced technologies, we're not, we don't have, we're not interested in hurting national security, but we are interested in knowing what these UAPs are. Uh, you have the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office uh, that was in the NDAA in 2022. Uh, and they have said, so the government has said, there's 366 reports of UAPs. A number of them, they will not classify. They cannot explain to us. Some they say are weather balloons, some they say it's clutter, some they say uh, are, are other anomalies, but then there are a bunch that they don't explain. Uh, and I think you see not just a bipartisan approach here in the House, but you see a, a bicameral approach. Uh, with uh, Senator Chuck Schumer and what he's trying to accomplish. And that really just is transparency and disclosure. I think the American people have a simple question, which is if none of this exists, if this is all false, why at every turn are there people trying to stop the transparency and the disclosure? Why are folks who are in charge of committees, whether they are in the House or in the Senate, opposed 
to this disclosure. And it's that, that point alone, that piques the interest, right? And that's really what we're about. This is not about whether there are aliens or there are not aliens, right? Th those are questions that I think remain unanswered, right? It's not whether there is stuff we have found here or not found here. Those questions remain unanswered. The problem is when we ask those questions, right, rather than being provided information that would prove it false, they stonewall the information. And that is what keeps the interest. Thank you. And we are here today because all of the whistleblowers, the hearings, the investigations, the discussions, the work that we have done have culminated in a negotiation that is happening in real time right now over the National Defense Authorization Act, a piece of legislation I care deeply about as a member of the House Armed Services Committee. And in that negotiation, we are fortunate that the amendment Congressman Birch had offered to the House version of the NDAA provides a beachhead for us to be able to get the answers and to be able to demand the transparency that is necessary. It is insufficient though to seek this transparency from the Department of Defense alone. We have to have cooperation so that Title 50 authorities through the intelligence community uh, are also uh, subject to review. That the FAA, the NSA, the FBI, even state and local authorities that have information are able to have that cataloged, assessed, and then put out before the public. It is my belief that the Burchett Amendment is the strongest position uh, when, when coupled with the additional authorities and additional agencies uh, that I've just mentioned in order to be able to get to that productive result. Unfortunately, we have members of the House Intelligence Committee and the Senate Armed Services Committee who right now are frustrating the effort that we are putting forward in order to be able to, to obtain uh, the information and to move forward. I think it is productive that Senator Schumer has engaged on this issue. He's not an insignificant person in this town, but I am concerned about embracing a disclosure paradigm that mirrors the JFK assassination disclosure paradigm. I don't know that there are any Americans who would view the JFK assassination disclosure paradigm as some sort of vaulted standard. Time and again, we've seen that that system fail. I also don't believe that pursuant to the Schumer language, we would have to wait 25 years in order to get this information. 25 years is a long time when you consider what Mr. Birch had said about the, uh, the lack of, of veracity that the government has provided the people up until this point. And so we're here to call for the most inclusive, most robust provisions possible to be included in the NDAA. We don't want to see a lot of log jams created. And in the event that there's any designation of a national security concern regarding disclosure, we believe that this information can no longer be siloed with the entities that have frustrated disclosure. That there should be broader briefings to members of Congress, that the oversight committee, which many of my colleagues here serve on, should be receiving those briefings, that the Armed Services Committee should be receiving those briefings, and it should not just be the fiefdom of the Intelligence Committee and uh, the Intelligence Community. And if we achieve that objective, I think we can start to restore some of the trust the public has, but as we work through the finer points of that legislation, we felt it was important today to come forward and express where the log jams exist, where the opportunities uh, lay before us, and we will pursue those with great vigor. Uh, I also wanted to specifically thank House Armed Services Chairman Mike Rogers. He allowed the Virgin Amendment to go on the bill without objection. And I think he is to be commended for that. And also when uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Ms. Luna and Mr. Virgin and I were at an Air Force base and were told by Air Force officials that we weren't allowed to see information that whistleblowers had expressed to us existed. It was in fact, Chairman Rogers himself who personally engaged with the Office of the Secretary of Defense and gave us the opportunity to view the images that were taken by pilots of some of these unidentified uh, aerial phenomena. So uh, work to be done, but uh, we hope that this gives you clarity as to what our goals are, how the scope and depth of, uh, of the mission ahead. You know, I came to Congress thinking that this place was uh, 
dysfunctional. And I had a general idea that uh, the bureaucracy would try to block this. But seeing it from the inside, I can tell you, it's worse than you can imagine. Um, everything that you suspect about the federal bureaucracy is doing, they're almost certainly doing. And it's nearly impossible to get a straight answer. So you all know my perspective, but at the end of the day, I, wanted, I think the, the taxpayers deserve to know what, where their money is being spent. The question we have before us is that, are we in an environment where, where the republic is, is being threatened by individuals and by, by people who are not elected to be able to withhold information from, from, the, from the public? And so um, I want to applaud uh, the efforts of this of this group, the, the folks standing behind me, especially Mr. Burchett, who, as he said, time it's time for transparency. Um, to get it's time for Tim's amendment to be passed, and and as well as the Schumer amendment. Uh, it's while they may not be perfect in their current forms, it gets us in a better direction. And I it's my belief that both of them will will actually get put us in a better place. I don't think that they have to be mutually exclusive. At the end of the day, if we if we want transparency, we should be going after every avenue that we can to get the information to the American people. Thank you. Well, again, thank you all. You know, this is about accountability and about transparency. It's about holding the deep state to task for their refusal to declassify information that the American people need to know, that Congress needs to know. In July, I questioned highly decorated naval and intelligent officers who had been in aircraft, who had seen UAPs. And what they told me was alarming. These officers told me, told us, that when encountering these UAPs, had they had to defend themselves or their aircraft or their personnel, they would not have been able to do so. Three military intelligence officials swore when giving those statements. Foreign objects, objects are buzzing around in our airspace, and Joe Biden's over 30 generals have not only been silent on the issue, but yet have, have yet to play ball with Congress. Not to mention American farmers are seeing intelligence aircraft above their field. There have been 144 reported sightings of these objects that we know of. And the DOD is more concerned about pronouns and woke agendas than informing Congress and having accountability and having transparency. In a moment when American supply chains are broken, our border is overrun, and Chinese ownership in American institutions has skyrocketed, American defenses against unknown aircraft are paramount. Because of this bipartisan effort in the House and now the Senate, intelligence agencies are, are now beginning to tout exploratory measures to investigate UAPs. But this needs to be an expeditious process, not 25 years, that's unacceptable. It should be noted that the Kennedy deadline has been blown through a couple of times. The information released has been less than full disclosure. And so whether it's little green men, American technology, or worse, technology from the CCP, we need to know. There needs to be better cooperation amongst agencies, and Congress has a right, an obligation to know. This is about transparency. This is about accountability. The truth is out there, and the American people are there. Senator, have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so two, on the amendment, um, Congressman, that you have a page and a half, the, the Senate version of that is 64 pages. Uh, I'm just wondering, are there you know, other things that you're going to be hoping to do to have a lot of and then the main thing or whatever, um, or is that it? I, I, don't know. I would like to be, that would be it. Yeah, I think we've, we've overcomplicated the issue, 64 pages, and, and Matt alluded to the 25 years when, good gosh, when the model something after the Kennedy assassination situation, and we're still waiting. Um, even it just, 
just peruse that they, they allow the delay of 300 days and then he was the blanket if it's um, if it's a, a national security issue so it, it, it just to me it, it we've got a lot of doors that could be open and I think this is a I just like a clear concise way to do it and I, I don't need a bunch of lawyers looking over our shoulders telling us we're literally looking over the <laughs> taking over my shoulders. I just think um, and the second one was just you made the distinction between the intel community and the intel committee. Um, could you characterize how the intel committee here uh, is, is responding to your legislation? I, I think I can speak to that just because. Uh, you know, we're, we had an NDA conference meeting yesterday where members of the House and Senate both raised this issue in debate. And the strongest resistance to transparency and disclosure and divergent language has come from the House Intelligence Committee. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, Ryan. So when you raise these concerns about the intel community being the one that's, that seems to be the roadblock every time you ask a question, is it your suspicion then that what these phenomenon are more likely to be are intelligence technology as opposed to little green men? Is that what you're trying to figure out or drill down on? Yeah, I, I think that I think that um, the ambiguity there creates frustration among all of us. The fact that, that we don't know, and of course, if you have uh, an encounter where some of our country's sensitive technology is observed. There has to be a mechanism to ensure that that's not available to our enemies. But that does not justify the multi-decade roadblock that uh, we have encountered. And as you heard from Ms. Luna, when we've got unelected staff members limiting our access to skips and to uh, the types of briefings that we want to receive as elected lawmakers, it really raises questions about whether or not this is uh, really the propriety of some of our intelligence assets or whether it's part of a cover up. And only when we get the information will we be able to parse that distinction. Uh, so, speaking with the intelligence community, the CIA is reportedly got the secret office, it's been investigating this for decades, and it's recovered some nine instances of possibly extraterrestrial material. So, is the CIA, do you believe they're hiding something? And if so, what is it? Well, uh, I believe that the recalcitrance from the CIA and from the intelligence community may be animated by some of the cover-up that we have seen up to this point. I hope that's not true, but I'm concerned that it is. And so that's why the Burchett language currently in the NDAA gives us a beachhead to be able to access not only Department of Defense authorities, and Department of Defense activities and programs, but we have to actually get into what the CIA has done with UAPs. But you got to ask yourself, since 1947, they told us this, since 1947, basically, they've told us this, these don't exist. Yet now we're finding out they're spending millions of dollars. NASA has reports on it. The CIA now has reports on it. But yet they keep, the Pentagon keeps telling us they don't exist. So again, you're spending a heck of a lot of money tell people something to investigate something that doesn't exist. But, but you're asking the right question, if I can just yeah. jump in for a second. Please. Because you know, here's, again, what just doesn't make logical sense, right? Is if this is if this is all nonsense, right? Then, then why are we seeing constant, from different areas of government, whistleblowers coming out with things that are credible? Why, as legislators, are we being stonewalled? Why does it feel like just as we're making some progress, all of a sudden the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future come out to talk to staff or legislators uh, that then all of a sudden aren't on board with more disclosure? And, and I think that's the American people who are following this. That is the same question that you're asking that they're asking. We see the Pentagon not being able to, to pass an audit for six years straight. Grush testified under oath testified under oath that, you know, part of these programs, these advanced technology programs are being funded by overfunding programs in some areas of the budget uh, or backdooring money. Uh, and so, again, we have been asking these questions. 
have, you know, from the financial standpoint and from the, the transparency standpoint. Uh, and, and it's, it, you know, Ryan, same question that you had. You know, the intelligence community does not want to share any of this information with Congress. We're asking why, why? And that, it makes it, it, it makes it appear that there is a substantial reason why they don't, not an insubstantial reason, right? It's not just maybe it's one of our new, our new toys, right? And so that's, I think, why you see this group pressing so hard. Can if you go back, if you go back to the hearing yeah. and think about what was said in committee, is that, you know, you're seeing this increased activity, yes, near military installation, yes, near conflicts, areas of operation, but you're also seeing it near our nuclear installation. And if you assume for a moment that it's American technology, we have normal areas of operation that we would test uh, new aircraft, right? But it's now conflicting with commercial aircraft. So again, there's got to be an accountability mechanism that if it is our technology, that it's being operated safely, that it's being tested safely. safely. And if it's Chinese technology, then we need to know and, and, and ask those questions of, are we ready? What are we doing to counter that? So I don't know if it's Little Green Men or U.S. technology or the CCP, but they're engaging in around our nuclear facilities. And I don't care who it is or where it's from, that should concern you. There are questions that need to be asked. There are questions that need to be answered. And I'll be damned, we're gonna find those answers and we're gonna turn over every stone until we get them. Let me just follow up a little bit on what Congressman did. You said about having to fight to get access to see some of the images. So to the best of, you can answer this question, have any of you seen something to, to lead you to believe stronger in the existence of something extraterrestrial, not well, Chinese or otherwise? Yeah, I, I, uh, I am hesitant to make that leap, but what I can tell you is that when uh, Congressman Luna and Congressman Burchett and I were at Eglin Air Force Base, and there were you know, hours of frustrations where they didn't want to let us see a photograph taken by a pilot during a, uh, a test flight. When I saw the photograph, ultimately, thanks to Chairman Rogers weighing in with the, with the Office of the Secretary of Defense, I can tell you it is, it is of nothing um, that, that I'm aware of having exi existing in our uh, arsenal of assets. And I've been on, I'm on the Armed Services Committee for seven years. I'm not unfamiliar with uh, the things that, that we have at our disposal. And uh, it was not something that, that I could classify as uh, something that we would possess or a capability that any of our adversaries possess. Because we also keep pretty pretty close eye on uh, those capabilities as well. So that, that leaves the question rather open on that. In the, te in the testimony, though, in the testimony, there was 13 or 14 documented near misses with our aircraft. So that alone, should ask, we should ask the question, what's going on? If it's our own people, why are we putting our own people at risk? Matt, have you all had your questions answered from what happened at the start of the year, the spy balloon incidents? And you guys all keep mentioning China. Why couldn't it be Russia or some other nation? <laughs> well, it makes you assume it's China. Yeah, I, Russia I, I, can't win in Ukraine. They don't. They can't. Yeah, they have this kind of. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of unanswered questions from the Chinese spy balloon incident. I can tell you that that our concern about China, particularly, um, you know, in, in the Gulf of Mexico, emerges from their increased activities in Cuba, and if they are building out more uh, capabilities, and frankly, you see a leveraged buyout of old Russian assets in Cuba being turned over to Chinese control, and so that's what animates our interest in that. Yes. So uh, my first question is, are we seeing any actual progress towards actual transparency? And second of all, in regards to the uh, UAP Disclosure Act, uh, Congressman Burchett, what kind of changes would you see to be done with it? Um, first answer is no. Um, the, the second is, I'd just like to see more transparency. That's all I want. You all are in the media. That's what we got to have. And I, it's very difficult for me to go home and talk to people who don't trust the government in the government is telling them something doesn't exist, but it's spending millions, if not billions of dollars on researching what doesn't exist. If I can jump in too real quick, um, to be clear, I think that Schumer's efforts here are probably the floor as to where we would like to see disclosure begin. So not to say that they're not good efforts, I think basically any step forward is a step forward in the right direction here. 
But again, going back to just what we have faced, it shouldn't be the case that it is this complicated to release this information. And also just to you know put it out there, I mean, it should scare the American people that there is maybe whether it's special interests or corporations that thinks that they have a say in what your taxpayer dollars go to and also what information you know. The American people are not stupid. We can handle this information. Other countries have declassified, declassified similar information and it's time to take the United States step up to the plate and make a big impact. One aspect of the Schumer um, amendment that, that does, that draws a little concern for me is a, um, is an appointed body that would review um, information or photographs or what have you uh, before it's released to the public. And if that is an appointed body that has, the American public would have no control over it, be appointed by a politician. So you know who'd be on there. You'd have the, the missile defense companies, you'd have the usual cast of characters. And to me, that that casts a chilling effect on the whole thing. In my I want to add something to Tim said, because I, 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 I want to give him some credit. So I, back to your question, have we seen progress? I mean, listen, you know, it's not like the 118th Congress is doing a lot of things, right? So in fairness, right, I think we're at the same pace. I think because of Tim's efforts and the group behind us, we, we are actually seeing a lot of progress. First of all, we had a hearing in the House that had never happened before. The Intelligence Committee had a hearing that hadn't happened in 50 years, okay? We've now had multiple press conferences on this. We're having legislation introduced, not just in the House, but in the Senate. So this has come a long way from the time when Harry Reid was talking about it or Marco Rubio was talking about it. You now have a bipartisan, bicameral effort. And so, I, I, you know, this, this, is, this place does a lot of things, unfortunately, incrementally, right? It doesn't do big things at the moment. Um, so I, I, I got to, you know, Tim is the one who has spearheaded a lot of this. And so, you know, to give him a little more credit that he's willing to give himself, I think we're making a lot of progress. We just have to accept the fact that the pace here in Washington, that we're caught up in that same pace. Yes, sir. Now, have you been able to see any documents or videos ETC that would be considered classified and follow up after there's a yes there? Yeah, right, yeah, no, I mean, we, we, we have. Yeah. And, and, and so when you see them, you know, have you said to yourself, there, there's no way this is a threat to national security? Why is it still being classified? Uh, there, there, I have reviewed classified information and thereafter, uh, you know, uh, wondered to myself, why that would be classified. Uh, and so I, I have had those concerns. I, I've also, as a member of the Armed Services Committee, seen uh, some radar signatures and other information that even my colleagues who are not on the Armed Services Committee have not been able to see. And that concerns me as well. I think we ought to democratize that information at a minimum throughout the Congress. And, and I think uh, more productively with the American people. We'll take one more. And I, I was gonna say, I've seen stuff my whistleblowers that would, you would all be scratching your head. Go ahead, last question. Uh, Congressman Gates, you mentioned members of the House Intelligence Committee pushed back on this. Did they give you any reason for that? I mean, what are they saying? Can you characterize that? Uh, when, you know, the, the reaction I've gotten is just sort of a broad brush national security concern. Uh, there's not been really an itemized critique of the Burchett amendment to the NDAA. It's been more just a, a generalized veto from the Senate Armed Services Committee and the House Intelligence Committee. And that's most unfortunate. Great, thank, thank you, you all so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And there we are. Nick, what do you think? Mixed messages galore, Joe. I couldn't tell if that group supports the UAPDA or doesn't. And I definitely uh, didn't get the impression all of them have read or at least understand understood the bill. So if I could just take a moment, I'd like to go through a few specifics. Good to hear that Luna sounds like she's bought in on the bill. I visited her office first this morning um, on the UAPDA, I should say. You know, they're trying to cast this Burchett, some of them, I should say, some of these members who just spoke are trying to cast the Burchett Amendment as better than the UAPDA. I encourage your viewers to understand that this is not correct. Burchett's amendment is like a page and a half and it's very loosely written and it actually appears to be limited to the Department of Defense and Defense Agencies. It does not seem to go as far as the UAP Disclosure Act as getting access to intelligence community materials on UAP. 
Um, we need the intelligence community stuff. We need the Title 50 access. You know, the comparison to the JFK records and then writing it all off, I want to be really clear. 99% of unreleased records that were associated with JFK's assassination were released under the JFK records bill. 99%. We can argue about what's in that last 1%, but that was an effective bill and gave many historians a lot of very useful information to contextualize at least portions of what happened with JFK. So, you know, to kind of cling on to that, it, it sounds a little partisan. It sounds just a little like firebrand Washington without actually so much meat behind it. Um, and, you know, for, for, for Tim Burchett, Rep Burchett, to say like, there's too much legalese in the UAPDA. I'm sorry, guy. Like, that's how bills are written in D.C., and they need to be very specific in order to get specific things done. The UAP Disclosure Act was informed by program insiders like Carl Nell, whistleblowers like David Grush. I actually understood there's been some conversations between a few of the offices that we just saw represented uh, and Mr. Grush just in the last day. Um, I, I won't go into any more detail. That was a little off the record uh, information I received on some of my congressional visits this morning. So it does sound like some folks are trying to sell this gang on the UAPDA, but there is just some real misplaced understanding. I do worry that some of the UAPDA backers just didn't work hard enough to sell this collection of reps on why that approach is actually productive and why is the one we want to see passed. So people need to keep calling all relevant reps offices in DC Please let them know you can try to make improvements in the UAPDA. You can try to improve it in future years, um, but don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. And, you know, frankly, again, the Burchett Amendment is not as powerful. And I just want to say one last thing. There's real misunderstanding in this crew, it sounds like, about the 25 year thing in the UAP Disclosure Act. It is not that we have to wait 25 more years once the bill is passed in order to start getting information. That is not an accurate read of the bill. I encourage people to look at D. Dean Johnson. Uh, that's his Twitter handle. He's been doing a lot of very specific breakdown just in the last half a day of kind of the differences between the amendment uh, that Burchett put forth and the UAP Disclosure Act. 25 years is the presumption of all UAP records 25 years or older should instantaneously be declassified with a review process. And here's the other thing that I think these, these reps need to understand and kind of gain some cohesion around. There's no way to do this without some kind of a review board that has carte blanche access to everything and is then interfacing with the president. The UAPDA and those types of aspects of the bill are not designed to hold up disclosure. They're designed to create an organized framework for disclosure to take place. For anyone to read the bipartisan Schumer rounds UAPDA legislation as overly legalistic in a mechanism to hold up disclosure is simply not understanding how the bill is designed to work and the very sophisticated thinking behind it. So, you know, again, we heard some positive things, including a few things for and against, you know, the UAPDA here in just the last few minutes. Um, you know, at the press conference that was not open to the public, which they originally said it would be. So I had to drop right. into D.C. from Baltimore today and actually visit some offices to get some FaceTime. But I, I don't know what they're really trying to accomplish here, Joe. It seems like a little bit of posturing, if you will. No, I agree. I mean, right off what you said about if we get 99 percent of the UAP slash UFO records declassified, we're going to have a lot of. Of material to go through are they spying on you nick the black helicopters coming there is an exceptionally loud looks like a potential military aircraft that just went by i'm sorry it was like super loud and it caught right. my attention uh yeah but i i agree if we get 99 percent of the records declassified it's going to be amazing and something carl nell said the difference between the, this and jfk is we consistently have more records coming in um and it's important because we're dealing with potential of technological surprise. So there's some importance here where we, we got to get this stuff out. It's not like JFK, you know, it happened and now let's get through some of the material. And also um, the 25 years, I'm perfectly, go negotiate it down to 10 years. Negotiate it to five years. Don't just come up with one page and then say, yeah, this deals with Title 50 when I don't, I'm not a Title 50 expert or any legislation expert. 
but there's nothing in there that talks about that. So I don't know what Gates was talking about there. And then Bert Burchett said on the panel, we all know it's going to be a, a missile defense contract. We don't know that. I mean, negotiate. Don't just put out one page. And yeah, it's a mixed message. Luna says, in addition to Schumer, I'm like, yes. And then Gates is like, no, no. <laughs> so it's like, I want to transcribe it so people can see. But yeah, it's a mixed message. Please, I, like, I would just urge them to negotiate with a, with something with teeth, not with one page. You know, we have to remember some of these are relatively junior House members. And I, you know, they call themselves the UAP caucus. I encourage people to like look up the word caucus and kind of understand what it means. It means bringing a group of people together around a more cohesive set of policy goals and visions and actions that they're going to be taking, even what they're communicating, their talking points. This doesn't sound like an organized caucus. This sounds like people trying to get a little face time. I hate to say it, some perhaps a little opportunistically to kind of 100%. use UAP. And, and you know, they need to come together and they really need to kind of work on a more, I think, uh, a House uh, Senate um, joint approach to investigating this issue. The, the division between our two you know, branches of the legislative side of our government, the House and the Senate, and how they've kind of been attacking UAP quite differently in many ways. And frankly, even the level of access that members in both branches have relative to one another. It seems like most of the senators have a lot more than most of the House members right now, as far as real you know, classified read-ins on what's going on. Right. And I expect the Senate to really try to work jointly with House members, even if it's folks they're not normally calling on and working with. They, they need to you know, get some better unity together around this and, and the real path forward. Somebody asked, somebody asked you a question. Can you ask Nick if he's able to reach the folks on today's conference who just spoke to clarify their understanding of the Schumer Amendment? Because I agree, it sounds like they may not have read it, which I don't know if they have. I know they have to read a lot of legislation, but you would think they would read this before they had their press conference. Maybe you can educate them, Nick. I mean, you're one person, obviously, but... Well, as I we said, do. I've been visiting I've been visiting offices this morning. I've been kind of giving that exact pitch to some of the staffers I've met with. Again, I believe it was the chief of staff of Burchett's office that I got the card of. I think that's the fellow I took the selfie with and put on Twitter. Um, but it was either him or one of the key folks who works with Burchett on this type of legislation. And, you know, I, I spent a good number of minutes chatting with him. I mean, he was receptive. I really appreciate that. And again, I think they're kind of even working through internally within the office, like, what exactly are they trying to do here? And I just, I hope more people than me are making those calls and saying those things because, you know, the more their phones ring in their DC office with people asking them to really work with the Senate to get something truly productive done, get this past the, the armed services and Intel, uh, you know, committee chairs in the house, that's gonna need to involve a lot of people coming together to exert pressure. And, you know, what we just saw, unfortunately creates a lot of wet noodles in the mix and and frankly i think hands ammo to opponents of uap transparency and allows them some space to be like oh no look even the uap caucus was saying the schumer amendment wasn't good so you know you should be happy i voted against it and that's just not good politics in dc joe like you can't hand something to your opponents like that and give them capital meaninglessly and you know especially between gates and Burchett, it sounds like Unfortunately, it sort of sounds like they're setting themselves up for that to be what's happening right now. So the more calls they get in support of the UAPDA, the better by far. I just want to say your tweets this morning saying you're visiting every office and putting out pictures is inspiring. It really is, because after I get done here, I'm going to call everybody. I'm going to go through the list. And, you know, it's really great that we have somebody like you in Washington doing this. So please accept our thanks for doing it. And. I'm going to let you go so you can get back to what you're doing and stay warm, Nick. But yeah, really appreciate it. I'm so glad you were on the other night. For people who didn't watch, you should tune in. It was two hours with Nick, Kevin Wright, and Anil, and it was really, really good. So thank you, well, Nick. Thanks for having me, Joe. Thanks for the encouragement. And again, the encouragement from everyone's really useful, but I can't do this alone. I'm just like trying to set a little bit of an example. And you know, the next time I come down here, if people want to join me in D.C., we can do that you can really literally just enter these representatives' offices. You give a knock, you open up, you kind of hold your breath, and you see what happens. And so I'm trying to get the message across. Thanks again for elevating that message and using your platform to do that, Joe. It's so appreciated. Uh, anytime. And um, I'll, I'll look for your tweets, and thanks again. See ya. 
that was great. Uh, I saw him tweeting this morning. I'm like, I, I need to ask him to come on. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through. I'll go through everything again from my notes. I took decent notes, not as good as uh, my soul notes, but yeah. Thanks everybody for watching, and it was great to have him here. So it started off good because Luna said, "She's like, we're gonna add this to Schumer rounds." I'm like, "Oh, I was wrong. I was listening to Dean. He was wrong. He wasn't wrong. That she's one person." And then Moskowitz said. He's the only Democrat on that on that in that group. He said the S word. I think he was the first one, I think, or maybe Luna said it, but he said Schumer. A few of them were OK to mention it, but then they took shots at him. And I'll, I'll keep looking at your questions, too. Not that I really have insight into any legislation, just what I've read. And then Gates got up and he said, Burchett, uh, the Burchett Amendment provides a beachhead um, and it provides the needed title authorities like title 50 and i don't know all exactly i know it gives you access to certain like the cia documents you need certain authorities and he's like burchett amendment gives us that it's the strongest amendment but i i didn't see that in the in the in the burchett amendment apparently schumer rounds does give that to us uh regarding schumer gates said we're concerned about it embracing the jfk assassination paradigm you know we're gonna have to wait 25 years as I said, Carl Nell said it's a little different than JFK. But as I said to Nick, yeah, it's if 95% of the documents, records, which include video, audio, documents, everything, if that gets released in the UFO world, we're going to have a lot of material, a lot of material to go through there, to go through. Sorry. He said... You know, they mentioned the 25 years, which it's not 25 years from now. It's 25 years from when the record is created. I don't want it to be 25 years. So I, like I said to Nick, oppose, negotiate, say we want it to be 10 years. We want it to be five years. We want it to be six months, whatever. But don't don't give out in, in, inaccurate information as Gates did in his in his uh, his tweet saying we have to wait 25 years before we get anything. And he said, I don't want to see a log jam. This is Gates still. Um, that's great, but Burchett's, it's going to be a log jam either way. It's going to take time. Washington moves slow, which sucks, but <laughs> I mean, Burchett has said, just release all the redacted files. Great. I agree. That's not going to happen. We all know it's not going to happen. You know, it's like, what's the, um, March on it wasn't March on Area 51. I, I forget what they called that. We're gonna all go to the to the offices, the agencies that hold these records and demand they release them. We don't have enough people to even make a difference right now. I don't think eventually we will. And I'm not trying to be negative. I just think Schumer for whatever it, you know the, the misgivings and problems it has, it's it's a great start. Um the misinterpretation of this is a uh, Logan. Yeah. It's um, it's something they can use to make it look really bad. Bassett was on the UFO podcast yesterday and did a b breakdown of Schumer Amendment and the current opposition. Well, we have we see the car we see this current opposition, but then they also talked about other current opposition. Um, let's see. He used the word Gay said thiefdom of the intelligence community, and then he mentioned that Rogers allowed Burchett into uh he he allowed the burchett amendment into the house version with no objections so they were praising him and rogers also made some phone calls to allow them when they went to i think it was eglin air force base to see a photo that they waited hours to see i think it was luna burchett and gates and then burleson said it's time for the for tim's burleson who's a republican said it's time for tim's amendment and schumer's to be passed i don't know how it would work i'd be fine with both of them being passed the way they are um, he said both of them have their faults, which we we understand. And then Ogles mentioned that Grush and Fravor and Graves at the July 26th hearing, you know, they talked about if they encountered UAP, they could not defend themselves. That alone is something that we need to deal with. That just basically on its own, whatever these objects are. And then he got into politics, which I'm not going to repeat. And then he said, little green, he talked, took a shot of Biden and his generals being silent on this. And then he said, 
whether it's little green men or advanced tech or Russian tech, we deserve to know. I agree. And then somebody asked a question on the length of both amendments, 64 pages versus one page. Are you going to add anything more to your amendment, uh, Congressman Burchett? And Burchett's like, I think we've overcomplicated this issue. 64 pages. Mine is clear and concise. Yeah, yours is not going to. Yours is not going to get any th anything done, in my opinion. Uh, Gates said the strongest opposition to the Burchett Amendment was the House Intelligence folks. And he mentions that Burchett, the Burchett Amendment can get us to find out what the CIA and other agencies are hiding. I don't think so. And maybe Schumer won't get that either. But I think it's it's a lot more. It's a lot more. There's a lot better chance that it'll happen with Schumer. And maybe it won't happen. Um, and then somebody asked about the alleged CIA crash retrieval program out of the OGA, the Office of Global Access. Moskowitz just said, if it's all, if all of this is bogus, and I, I don't think that answer was, that question was really answered. And as I said, on, as I said on Twitter, I was told a few years ago, the CIA is up to their neck in crash retrieval stuff. So that is definitely the place to look. Moskowitz said, if all of this is bogus, why push back so hard? Why? It makes it appear that there's a substantial reason why you're keeping it secret and not that it's just some of our technology, our new toys. And they asked a question, and I'll go through all your questions. You can repeat, and I'll stay on for at least a half hour. Is there anything you've seen that makes you think this is extraterrestrial or non-human intelligence as far as you know data they've shown you? And Gates is like, I'm hesitant. You know, it took us hours to see a photo, and that was nothing I'm aware of existing within our assets. And I've been on the Armed Services uh, Committee for a few years. He was on. I don't know if he's on right now. Burchett talked about near misses, and that alone should get people interested in this to keep our pilots safe, of course. That's why uh, Mellon at the Seoul Conference said, I started out with national security and pilot safety because I wanted to not scare them away. And those are two really important issues. They are. And then we get to some of the other issues which melon even referred to the possibility of it being interdimensional question are you seeing any progress this is for chet no uh laszlo asked why don't you mention russia and they kind of like well if russia was so advanced they would be doing a lot better in ukraine had they gotten there have they gotten their answers about balloon gate answered i think the answer was no have you seen any progress with disclosure i think and Burchett said no what changes to schumer would you make we would want we want more transparency was the answer. I think it was that was Burchett. And that's that's so basic that answer. I mean, I, I really don't know if he's read it. Luna, Schumer is the beginning, the forward to where we want to begin, but it shouldn't be this complicated to release this re release this information. The American people can handle this. Well, we don't know what we're dealing with, so I, I hope we can handle it. But either if we can or we can't, I will I support releasing it. Yeah, it would be sim it would be nice if we could just say just say. Can you release this material? We'd like to see it. Okay, we'll release it. Here you go. Once again, not going to happen. For chat, he's concerned about the appointed panel. And he said, we all know who's going to be on there, missile defense contractors and so forth. We don't know that. Obviously, the makeup of the panel is a concern. We need to find out who's going to be on there. And once it gets chosen, we can deal with it when that, when that happens. And Moscow was just pointed out, this is really slow. Things in Washington happen really slow. Gives credit to Burchett, but again, the pace is slow. Have they been able to see documents that are classified? Gates, yet, yes. What was what you saw a threat to national security? Gates, I wondered why it was classified. You know, I've also seen radar returns and my colleagues have that my colleagues haven't been able to see. And that's a problem. They should be able to see that. But we all know certain people have higher clearances. And if you're in there longer with seniority, you'll get to hear and see stuff more than your other beginning colleagues, which a lot of these folks are. For chat, you'll be scratching your head if you saw what I saw from some of the whistleblowers. And he doesn't like that the broad brush of national security is what we hear when the other side pushes back. And the pushback is from the House Armed Services Committee and I believe the House intelligence committee i forget the the hipsy i believe so that's it i think i've covered most of it if you guys have any questions or anything thank you julie um feel free i don't know if i'll be able to answer anything let's see i think they have read it saw the similarities with the jfk amendment and thought well it took decades and we still don't have it all well 
I mean, JFK is basically the first part you hear. They say it's modeled after the JFK Assassinations Act. So I'm not sure if they read all of it. I will read it again. Um, and if you have any questions, put it in caps. It's 1026. We've been on for an hour. For those of us in the international audience, you are great and level-headed source. Thank you. Not to mention your transcription skills. Somebody, somebody offered to help me with transcriptions late. Uh, recently which i'm going to take them up on and i've had help in the past but it hasn't worked out for various reasons i mean i can pull if you guys haven't seen when nick mentioned if i can find it if, if nick mentioned um some of the work that douglas dean johnson is okay the jfk part is the biggest issue in my opinion as i said 99% of the JFK records have been released. Not all of them, and there may be some of the most important records that have not been released. If we get, yeah, if we get 99% of the UAP UFO records, it's going to be a lot, a lot since 1945 or 47 or the 30s, whenever it is, it's going to be a lot. We're going to have so much to go through. And I'm willing to take a chance unless there's some other other alternative that people put forward instead of, instead of saying, I don't like this, I don't like that. And then Burchette with one page. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, if you guys want to support the effort, I will put up the information again. I, I hate asking for support, but that's always appreciated and subscribing and liking helps yeah i really appreciate that whatever um yeah jfk but but we've gotten a light a lot of information and that's limited information think about de decades of information that we have on uap if it gets released i don't know a better alternative right now except to keep saying just release the files. Just release the files. It's simple. Yeah, it's simple in theory. Not going to happen in reality. So, um, Dean, I'll just show you some of Dean's tweets from yesterday. Give me one second. Yeah, that's that. So, basically, he went through, and Dean knows his stuff. He's very involved in Capitol Hill and all of that. So, I usually defer to him because I don't know that stuff. Let me just get this one comment off. So he went over Gates. I'll go over Gate what Gates said first, and then I'll only do a couple a couple of these. So Gates put out his tweet yesterday, which caught all, most of us off guard because we didn't know what was going on. It was really quiet from the UAP caucus of Luna Burchett, Moskowitz, Gates, and... Ogles, which I, who I didn't know was part of that. He said, this is Gates. Americans have long been kept in the dark by the U.S. government about UAP. The time for transparency is now. We don't want the information in small bits and pieces over 25 years. Agree. I want it all now. But like I said, not going to happen. And that people might say that's a defeatist attitude. I'm not a defeatist. I'm not negative. I just, I mean, things aren't going to happen like that. If they were, I mean, I would support it. The NDAA, and I don't care if they're Republicans and I'm lefty, whatever, it doesn't matter. The NDAA passed by the House includes an amendment by Burchett, which was first put out in July, which mandates the DOD, the DOD to declassify the military's knowledge on UAPs within 180 days of the NDAA's enactment. Wonderful. We're going to get everything in, in six months. The proposal is proposal is currently the most effective way to expose what the DOD is hiding. Instead, Senator Schumer is trying to jam his amendment through the NDAA conference that would establish a commission akin to the decades-long JFK investigation under the commission. Sorry, akin to the decades-long JFK investigation. Slow down. <laughs> Under the commission, it could take up to 25 years to declassify documents and records related to UAP. This is unacceptable. Yes, yeah, some records it would take up to 25 years. Like I said, offer an alternative of five years or a year. I totally support that. Thankfully, Mike Rogers, 
has been an ally in the efforts to expedite the disclosure of information on UAPs and to hold a House position. Well, if he's supporting Burchett's, Burchett's um, amendment and he realizes it's not going to do anything, that doesn't necessarily mean he supports disclosure. But I don't know how deep Mike Rogers has looked into this. Thank, thanks so much, Phil. I appreciate that a lot. When the Air Force tried to block my review of the information discussed below chairman rogers personally made phone calls and broke that log jam that's really really good that he did that and helped them see that photo the senate now faces a choice between adopting see a choice you have mixed messages luna said in addition to schumer the senate now faces a choice between adopting Rep representative burchett's amendment or senator schumer's prolonged approach so yeah a choice but they're they're mixed messages and i'll just go quickly i'm not going to stay on very long so dean douglas dean johnson who's really really been keeping all of us up to date on information related to the legislation especially schumer rounds but over the last few years he's an invaluable resource i need to get him on here and i have asked before i've asked several people who have said no for various reasons not because that people have good reasons for not wanting to go public and not join a podcast, but hopefully that'll change in the near future. I've asked some big names who would be really good. And one of the responses was it'll happen in time. Hopefully next year, there's stuff that will happen and that'll change things. I'm not, I don't know this specific person for sure is involved with whatever's coming next year with Lou mentions and talks about, but they could be. So Doug, uh, Dean says uh, Representative Gates has revealed that he much prefers a House passed Burchett amendment to the Senate passed Schumer rounds UAP disclosure act. Burchett Texas below my red comments highlight its very limited scope and force. So it talks about this is Burchett, the Secretary of Defense documents. The Secretary of Defense shall declassify any DOD documents and other DOD records relating to publicly known sightings of UAP. It's very narrow, as Dean points out. And as long as it does not reveal sources, methods, or otherwise compromise national security. So it's like same thing as Schumer, except in Schumer, the president has the final say. Here, the DOD has this final say, from what I can tell. Dean says, generally, this seems to mean that the agency, DOD, that classified certain materials based on national security justifications, now is told to declassify some of its some of it, but only if same the same agency does not believe that this would compromise national security. So basically the fox guarding the hen house, they make their own decision. I'm like, yeah, we're not going to declassify. So they're in charge of their own declassification. Not a good thing, according to Dean and other folks. To me, it seems like it's not a good thing. And he, he says, in this section, the term publicly known sighting of UAP means a sighting. And as Dean points out, that's narrow of an unidentified UAP of which the information is available in the public domain. But there are cases that we've never heard about. Those are the cases we really want to hear about. Not that I don't want to hear everything there is to know about the Tic Tac and everything else, but the unknowns cases, the unknown cases that we've never heard about would be amazing to read about if they release those files. It does not include United States government information that was unauthorized was an unauthorized public disclosure so if somebody leaks something i believe dean says this amendment would not give the secretary of defense oh and after that it talks about the secretary of defense and dean says it would not give the secretary of defense any new authority to declassify any records that are outside of his department's classification authority so that's Dean, and he, he followed up by saying the 65-page Schumer Rounds UAP Disclosure Act, while not flawless, it has issues, we all know that, would create a Senate, it would create a Senate-confirmed independent citizen review board holding broad authorities, including, including subpoena power, which is important. The board would be charged with gathering all UAP records from all agencies, not only the Department of Defense, and would proceed under a presumption presumption of immediate disclosure as Carl Carl Nell pointed out at and it's in the legislation language he, Carl Nell reiterated this at Seoul and 
so it would pr have the presumption of immediate disclosure of the records, albeit with such exceptions as recommended as recommended by the review board based on specified criteria. And the president would be the ultimate decider. And I'm almost done here and I'll look at questions again. And then we have another great person on Twitter, Rogue, Rogue UAT, UAP Task Force said, if, start out with the one, Congressman Rep, Congressman Gates, I fear you have misinformed, you have been misinformed and it is at the peril of truly transparent legislation. As much as I, we all love Tim Burchett, his legislation does nothing to disclose Title 50, CIA, DOE, and other covert activities involved with the UAP, with UAP retrieval, non-human intelligence, and research um, and development. This is a major problem. Please, please DM me so we can schedule a call with Representative Burchett and the authors of the bipartisan Schumer Rounds Amendment. Yeah, why aren't they like, talking together? What the heck? We must ensure the NDAA does not perpetuate this cover-up. And then he followed up by saying, if you carefully read the UAP Dis Disclosure Act, it discloses immediately what Burchett's language discloses in 180, 180 days, and it covers... Let me repeat that again. If you carefully read Schumer Rounds... It discloses immediately what Burchett's language discloses in 180 days. And Schumer Rounds covers the CIA, DOE, contractors, etc. Burchett and Gates have the right idea, but their language is only their language only currently addresses DOD. So yeah, the right idea, but I think it's a little bit of a show. And you know, we're not getting this information. We should be doing this, and they're not listed any anywhere in Schumer Rounds if that passes. They won't get any, any, you know, they won't get any, um, what's the word recognition. So that's an issue with a politician, which I really, it, I understand it, but come together, make something Schumer rounds, Luna, Burchett, Gates, Gillibrand. I don't care. None of us care. It's like, put all their names on it. Just, just negotiate the 64 pages into something that's acceptable to you. Not a page, not a page. So anyway, that's really all I have to say. If you guys have anything else, what is this? Um, no, nope, that's not what I wanted to see. They need to appoint people like Mellon, Nolan, et cetera, for the review board. I forget who said it at the Seoul conference, but somebody did say that. Um, Gary Nolan would, would be perfect. A perfect person to work with them. David Grush said he would make coffee if he could sit in on the board's negotiations and discussions, the panel of nine plus the executive director. Uh, Grush would be great if he was there. He just wants to do his part. I mean, the guy wants, I mean, if you believe we really have non-human technology and non-human craft and they may have injured humans and possibly killed and mutilated humans as Ross reported. Ross Coulthard said his sources said then it's the most I, I, I am a broken record when I say this the most important topic in the history of humanity and we still can't get the proper press coverage for it we elected all of you to govern that means sitting down and making compromises couldn't agree more Congress is incapable of that capable of that anymore it's getting worse and worse and it really you know, I was really encouraged when I saw Schumer rounds and it was bipartisan. And then we saw Luna and Moskowitz and AOC and Burchett and Gates all asking similar questions. And then this happens and this could turn out to be good. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to jump the gun yet. I'm hopeful, but it's definitely, it's a mixed bag. I hope I'm going to call again today. I haven't called luna I, I i i kept it to my representatives but i'm going to try calling them too just every little phone call helps and just please negotiate negotiate schumer rounds with something uh something substantial more than a page okay yeah it's uncontrollable since i did my show back in 99 2000 the eyebrow goes up when i make a point 
I did a public access so access show. I did 13 shows. I did stuff on Mars. I did UFOs. I interviewed Linda Moulton Howe on the environment for an hour. We didn't even go into UFOs. It was kind of a little boring because she's known more for the UFO stuff. So anyway, all right. It sounded like Luna Burleson and Ogles are good with Schumer rounds but also want Burchett's, Burchett's language included as well. I'm included. That's fine. If we can get, you know, get all of it in there, I don't know how exactly it would conflict with each other, but work it out. Work it out. You know, it would be great if they all had a press conference, but there's jealousy. It, it was the first intelligence community IG, Charles McAuliffe, who re represents David Grush and other whistleblowers. According to Corbell and Knapp, um, he said a lot of these committees are jealous of each other and there's and they're territorial, which is some, I believe, some of what you see going on here. So human beings, unfortunately. All right. I am gonna go. Uh, I appreciate everybody listening. I'm 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 glad I was able to put it out live. Sorry the audio sucked, but that was their person who was holding an iPhone or something in the audience with bad audio, bad camera work. Yeah, you're welcome, Jeff, and everybody else. And um, the the Hill had a better stream. They probably had their own camera guy there. I couldn't just put that stream on my stream. I just, I mean, I could have, but that's copyright issues. So, last thing, even though Burchett's language seems superfluous, if inclusion of it gets these guys on board, then do it. Exactly. I don't care. Everybody, work together, make it happen. Thank you, Phil. It's not jealousy. Burchett and Gates want the spending nonsense to stop. Please. What spending? There's $20 million for, for Schumer. That's nothing. That's just like offset money. What's spending? I mean, we all want programs that are working on whatever that are not, you know, that have no oversight. We want to know where our money is going. But as far as Burchett keeps saying, this is a Pentagon money grab. This is a, it's like, this particular legislation is not a Pentagon money grab, in my opinion. But anyway, all right. Thanks, JB. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Brad, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, support. I will put up the information if you want to. If not, I will still be on Twitter at the UFO Joe. Yeah, thanks, Chris. See you guys soon. And I will. Let's see. There we go. Take it easy, guys. See you soon.